In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I go from this to this. I'll also be talking about things that you have to stop doing. I'll be going over brush settings, how to create the effect without losing texture, and different scenarios that you might find every now and then. The first thing you have to stop doing is using inner glow in the layer style panel. And this is something I see a lot of people doing still. I used to do this around 2017 when I didn't really know my tools very well. And I would just create this on a separate layer and I would use a layer mask to pick and choose the areas where I wanted it to show. But inner glow is too uniform. There's not much variation. It's good for some things. I just wouldn't use it for rim light. The next thing I see people doing is using bevel and emboss from the layer style panel. Simply put, it's just not good enough. And I'll just move on. The last thing I see people doing, and I see this one the most, is people just painting with whatever color and setting the layer mode to overlay. And this really just doesn't do anything. All it does is change the shadows to a different color. You're not introducing any brightness. You have to introduce brightness and color at the same time. So just painting the shadows isn't going to be enough. Okay, now to get started, I'm going to make a rough selection around the subject, and I'm just going to speed this part up. In the meantime, I'm going to let you know that I will be re-uploading, I believe, two videos that I have already uploaded on this account. And just a heads up, don't get too mad at me for that. I'm trying some new things out and I'm going to be messing with the settings before I set the video to public. Just to see if it does anything for the channel. Now for you guys that are a little bit more advanced, this is how I keep my layers organized. After creating a selection around my subject, I create a group and then I create a layer mask with the shape of my subject. And then I just keep all of my layers inside of that group. That way all of my effects are contained without using clipping mask. It helps me divide everything as the layers start to add up. Now the first thing I'm going to start doing to edit this picture is I'm going to make the subject darker because highlights work the best whenever the image is already dark. It doesn't work as well when you're working with a very bright image. Just make sure that you don't make everything way too dark because at a certain point the pixels start to become black and when that happens, you're actually losing detail. So make sure you don't lose detail while you're doing that. Now I'm making a selection around the face because I want it to be brighter. So I'm going to add a little bit of brightness onto the face, except I have this hard edge. So I'm going to hold Alt and click on the layer mask so that I can see the shape that I made. And then I'm going to go to Gaussian Blur and I'm going to blur the edge so it's not so hard. I'm pressing Ctrl Z so you can see the difference. Now the brushes. Believe it or not, there's nothing special about the brush that I use. The only thing that I do mess around with is the hardness of the brush, the softness, and the opacity of the brush. Other people would try to sell you their specific brushes and tell you that you need them for this. Just to let you know, don't forget that time I looked out for you. Now if you're on a mouse or a drawing tablet, you're going to want to keep the opacity down. Don't use 100% and don't go too low either, because then it's just going to take forever to make those strokes. And if you keep it at 100%, then you won't have much control over the intensity of your strokes. Around 40 to 80% would be fine. Now, if you're on a drawing tablet and you have pressure sensitivity, then you wanna keep these two buttons turned on. Now the layers that you're going to need for this, you're going to have to create a solid color layer. After selecting the color that you wanna work with, you have to select the shade from the top of the box because that's where you're going to find the brightest shades of every color. Next, just make sure you select the layer mask and fill it in with black. And then you can just start painting with white. One thing I forgot to do in the video was set the layer mode to screen. This way it looks a little bit transparent, allowing some of the detail to come back, but that's really not enough to get the detail back. So I'm going to show you how to get around that in a minute. Notice how I'm also painting inside the shape, not just around the edges. That way it won't end up looking like this. If you wanna rotate your canvas, just press the R key and just drag your mouse around. That way you can get a better angle. Right now we're only going to focus on making hard lines and then after this we're going to make a feathered effect. So don't go anywhere because this isn't it. Whenever you run into areas that have folds or creases, you might want to consider not doing a continuous line and maybe skipping a couple sections just to add more variation. Keep in mind what I said at the beginning, don't just paint around the edges. And also, don't stop changing the size and the hardness of the brush. Keep messing around with those settings because it's always going to be different. Now we're going to add some feathering 
You can do this on the same layer we've been working on, but I wouldn't recommend it because it's a little bit more destructive that way. And if you do it on two separate layers, then you don't run the risk of ruining the hard line. That way you don't have to start over. So I'm going to duplicate the solid color layer and I'm going to fill the layer mask with black. This way I have a clean slate. So I'm just going to reduce the hardness of the brush even more and then I might lower the opacity of the brush. It really depends. This time I'm making the strokes even wider on purpose. So I don't really feel like I have the control that I want to have. So I'm going to undo all of this and I'm going to reduce the opacity of the brush. This way the strokes aren't so intense. And don't worry if you have overlapping strokes like I do. We're going to take care of that in a second. And also make sure your strokes aren't too solid. You want them to be kind of transparent. At least during the feathering part anyway. Now to make sure the strokes don't look like they're overlapping, you go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and then just set this to whatever value you need. The problem with this is that it's a little bit too even. So I'm going to feather my brush or reduce the hardness, however you want to call it. And I'm going to make a few strokes just so I can get rid of this and make it look a little bit more less uniform. Earlier, I mentioned that we would be losing texture from this process. And if you notice around the hair area, we have lost texture from the hair. So to bring back some of that texture, double click on the layer where we have our feathered highlight. This will bring up the layer style panel. Then look at the underlying layer slider, press the alt key, and then drag the slider to the right. I also want to bring back some texture from the sweater, but to do so, it would require me to adjust the slider further to the right, more than I did for the hair. So I don't want to adjust it any further for the hair, so I'm just going to add the feathered highlight on a separate layer. That's right, a third layer. So don't be afraid to make multiple layers of these so that you can target specific areas. Now I'm going to move on with the opposite side. And this time I'm actually going to set the layer mode to screen as I forgot to do it with the pink side. You'll find that the face is a little bit more complicated to deal with because if you mess anything up, it's very noticeable when it's on the face. You might see me add a few strokes over the eyebrows or above the lips just to sort of see if that would work. But it's going to be very messy at first, and then as I'm trying to figure out if it'll work or not, I'm reworking it and trying to figure out how it should look and if it'll work. And if it doesn't work, then I just walk the idea back and remove some of the strokes. In this case, it really does help to add more than what you need, and then just start eliminating areas that aren't really helping. And here I also use blend if, always give it a try to see if it helps. At this point, I'm getting the impression that I'm almost done with the highlights, but if you really want to see how it would look, if it was more finished in a way, then you should try adding a light source or some sort of glow. I'm just going to duplicate the same solid color layer since it already has a color picked out. And I'm also going to make the brush extra large. This way I can add more than I need and I can just start eliminating parts that I don't need. Now I'll just do a little bit of color correcting using the color balance tool because it doesn't really look like it blends in well. So I'm going to add a little bit of purple since this is a 
dark image. Lastly, I'm going to do some cleaning up and I'm going to add some feathered strokes like we did on the pink side. And then I'm just going to add a few layers here and there just to add a little bit more contrast. And that's pretty much it. I hope you found this video helpful and if there's anything else you want to see on this channel, then just leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of this video. If you want to see more work that I've done, you can follow me on Instagram or you can follow me on TikTok where I sometimes post exclusive content in case you're interested in that. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys in the next video.